Hola, my name is Ferry and I'm the creator of theorycourse.com. In this video, I going to show you a complete theory test and also I going to show you how the theory test for the car goes at the CBR. Also, I going to tell you what is the best way to make the test at the CBR in my and many others opinion. But the best preparation for your theory test is our video course in which I explain everything you need to know to pass the theory test at the CBR successfully. And you can order our video course on theorycourse.com. And our video course will increase your chance of seeing this green thumb up after the test. I hope you have fun watching this video. First, let me tell you what happens after the test. After the test, you see if you are passed or not. And you get an email from the CBR with your result. And this is a very nice result. Zero mistakes at hazard perception, zero mistakes at knowledge, and zero mistakes at insight. And the email contains two parts. This is the first part. And then you get an explanation of the topics you had at the test. And if the topics are green, you had zero errors. Orange, you had one error in that topic. And if it's red, you had two or more errors. So let's check the results of this guy who did the test. And you see everything is green. So he had zero mistakes in using the road, special roads, traffic signs, legislation, priority, and so on and so on. And this kind of WhatsApps, I get many of them. With yeah, yeah, I became a little wiser. Thank you so much for the great course. 100% recommended. And you see, everything is green. Everything is green. Yeah, so, if you want to have a green result with a green thumb up, order your video course right now. Okay. If you want to do the test, first you have to make an appointment at cbr.nl. And if you don't have an appointment yet and you have to make an appointment, please be wise and make an appointment with extra time. It costs you about 12 euros more, but you get 15 minutes more to make the test. And if you're a little bit nervous or you don't understand the language of the CBR, then the 15 minutes will help you a lot. And the 15 minutes are only for the insight and the knowledge part and not for the hazard perception. Because for the hazard perception, you get only 8 seconds. So be smart, order a test with extra time. And at the day of your test, you go to the CBR. And every CBR has the same look like this. There are two columns to sign in. There is two or more screens with some information on it and every CBR has lockers and be sure you are at time. Well, if you touch the screen, you get a screen like this. And the screen says in Dutch a reserverings number and in English it means the number of your reservation. And after you made the reservation at CBR.nl and paid for it, you get an email and in that email there is your reservation number. Let's say your number is 1111, to make it easy for me and for you. Then you push here 1111. And then on the screens at the wall, you see 1111 is aangemeld. And aangemeld means signed in. So you are signed in. And then after a while, you see 1111. Spullen in locker. Place your stuff in one of these lockers. And then you go to this locker and everything what you have with you. Like the letter from the CBR, if you printed it out with your reservation number, you put in that locker your jacket, your hat, your helmet, your scarf, your gloves, your cap, your bag, your phone, your watch, your keys, metal objects, laptop, camera, wallet, and especially your negative stress you put everything in the locker and what you do not put in the locker is a small note with your reservation number because in the test room you have to put that number again and also don't put in the locker your id and those two things is the only thing you are allowed to take with you into the exam room well 
If you put your stuff in the locker, you take a seat again and then you wait till you see 1111 ga naar start examen. Ga naar start examen means go to the start of your test. Well, if you don't move too fast, then somebody of the CBR will call you and say, hey, come over here. And to him, you show your ID, he makes sure that it's you. And if it's you, he says to you, okay, you can go inside table number four, for example. And if you don't move too fast, his colleague will say, go inside now. Okay, you go inside and you go and search for table number four. There is table number four. Well, take a seat and then you see a mirror in f here above your head. You see a camera is watching you. Big Brother is watching you. Eh? Big CBR is watching you. You see a screen and you can move that screen in the most perfect position for you. So you can move it to the left, to the right, upwards, downwards, whatever you want. And the seat also, you can make a good position. And if you are in a good position, you touch the screen and you will so see something like this. And, oh, what funny, this CBR has it in English also. Yeah, log in with your reservation number. You can find this number on the booking confirmation. Yeah, that's funny. The booking confirmation is in the in the locker. So write that number on a small piece of paper. And if you require assistance, please notify an employee of the CBR. But you don't need assistance because I'm going to explain you everything in this video. And here you see your reservation number must be entered. And what was your number again? Right. 1111 and after that you push on login and if you push on login then you see your email address for example info at theorycourse.com if you want to use another email you can change the email to the email you want because after the exam the CBR will send the result to this address and if you think the email address is right, you push on confirm. And then you may be for 20 minutes or longer in the CBR building. Then finally they say to you, welcome. And then click on start at the bottom right to start the theory exam. That's here, start. And the CBR also wish you good luck. Just as I do. I wish you also good luck. So let's push start and then before we start, first an explanation about the buttons on the top right. Here you see help, you see review and you see overview. And of course I'm going to explain you what those buttons mean. Well, if you push on help, you see browse and review and you see types of questions and here review and overview so what means browse browse means not with the hazard perception part but with the knowledge part and the inside part you can click on the next or on the previous next 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 previous previous how you want it make the test is your choice yeah and review part what does a review part means review part means that if you push this sign here yeah, the review sign at a question in the overview you get a little star how beautiful yeah, so here you have two questions which you didn't answer at that moment then you have a little star but why should you use this flag to mark a question uh, because you see, you can see the difference between answered because they're gray or unanswered and they're still white. So I think you don't need to push the flag. Uh, that's the review part. And then we go to the types of questions. And the types of questions, there are many of them. 
first of all, you have the hazard perception questions. Now, how do they look like? They look like this, and they're all the same. What should you do? Brake, release the accelerator, or do nothing. That's always the same, so you don't have to read this part. Eh? Brake, release the accelerator, nothing. That's easy. First thing you do is watch your speed. And second thing you do is look at the total image. Don't look in the mirror, because if you have to stop, if you have to brake, it doesn't matter if there is someone behind you. Yeah, if there is a pedestrian crossing, crossing and there are a few kids crossing the street, you don't drive on because there is a lorry behind you. Yeah, if you have to stop, you stop. So don't look in the mirror. It costs you a few seconds. Don't do it. You only have eight seconds. That's not so much. So, in this case, we brake. And why we brake? Because we see a stop sign. And a stop sign means you have to stand completely still. There are other videos on YouTube or other teachers who tells you that in the snow you must never brake. That's how you say it in nice English? Bullshit or something? That's bullshit. Because if there is a stop sign or there is a pedestrian crossing or your traffic lights are red or you must give way to somebody then you stop, you break, even if there is snow or whatever. So, strange advices like never break in snow, don't listen to them, please. The next kind of questions are the yes-no questions. And the yes-no questions are not so difficult. Uh, you have only two choices, yes or no. Visibility is 40 meters. You drive with your rear fog light on, is that allowed? And, of course... It's allowed because if visibility is less than 50 meters by snowfall or fog, you may use the rear fog light. The next kind of questions are multiple choice questions. And there you can have ABC or AB or ABCD. So you read the question, how many meters can indivisible cargo protrude from the roof of a car at the rear? That's one meter. So you push at a one meter and it's get orange at the CBR. And if you think, oh, it must an other answer, you push the other answer and then that become orange. But one meter is the right answer. Oh, look, what's over here? Theorycourse.com. There you can order your video course with everything you need to know to pass the test in one go. Next question, open questions. And at the open questions, you must fill in the answer. How many centimeters can car go protrude from the side of a car? And if you studied well, you know the answer must be 20. So you push the 2 and the 0. And then you see the 2 and the 0 in orange. And that's your answer. The next one, the drag and drop questions. Mostly only at the priority part. So drag and drop means the one, the two and the three or the one, two, three and four must go to the right places. And I know many people say the white car goes first because there is nobody from him, from his right side. But that's not true because he's turning left and the motorcycle is going straight on the same road. And if he's driving on, he get a problem with the motorcycle. So the first one is the scooter, the moped, the moped goes first. And after the moped, we have the motorcycle because he's going straight on the same road as the white car. And finally, the white car. That's the right answer. The next questions are the single drag and drop questions. Instead of three choices or four choices, you have only one choice. Who goes first? Well, we see the white car is coming from the right, so the white car is going first. And a bicycle track with a normal road is still a normal junction. So the bicycle has no special rules or whatever. And then we have the hotspot questions. And hotspot is like this. You see two, three or four images and you have to push on the right image. 
So which symbol has to do with the engine? And that is the last one. Looks like an engine, has to do with an engine. This one is the cruise control. This one, that is the battery. And ABS is ABS in Dutch, is in English ABS. Okay, it's nothing to do with the engine. And then the funny CBR has for you two extra test questions. And this is on the website of CBR.nl. Test questions in the theory exam. You get two extra questions in the theory exam. These are test questions which do not count towards the final result. So why they put them? Huh? <laughs> Strange, huh? The test questions look the same as the other questions in the exam. You don't know which questions are the test questions. And the test questions are not in a fixed place in the exam and only appear in the knowledge and insight exam components. So not in the hazard perception, only in knowledge and insight. And mostly at the CBR, they're mostly in the insight part. And you have enough time to answer all questions. That's not true. Because for the two questions, you don't get a one minute extra or something. So that's not true. It's a lie. Huh? Okay. Why test questions? By using test questions, we, the CBR, can better investigate whether exam questions are suitable for inclusion in the theory exam. We investigate whether the test questions can be used to ultimately come towards the exam result. And that's another bullshit. And why? Because you don't know which are real questions and which are test questions. And the CBR knows which they are. So they don't have to put two extra test questions. CBR knows very well that everybody who's doing the test, if they are human, they're nervous. Everybody is. Even if you studied well, you are nervous. And this will make you more nervous. So was this information from the CBR helpful? They ask. Of course you push. No, it's not. Okay, now you know everything about what kind of questions and now finally we can click on start over here. And if you start the test, then the test will always start with hazard perception. And if you click on start, the hazard perception exam part gets started. And you can answer the questions as long as the timeline is running. And if you don't answer in time, the question is wrong, so wrong. You cannot go back to the previous question. And with each question, you have the choice of what to do in this situation. You break, you release the accelerator, or you do nothing. And very good to know that in each question, you are the driver. And on the dashboard, you can see the speed at which you're driving. It's also important, the most important thing, the speed. And when you change the direction, you will see a turn signal. So if you turn left, you see the indicator to the left. And if you go right, go to the right. And you can see the traffic behind you in the rear view mirror. But the rear view mirror, you better don't use the hazard perception part. And you have eight seconds to answer each and every question. And to pass this part, you must answer at least 13 of the 25 questions correctly. So now you know everybody passed the hazard perception part. You cannot, you may not fail this part. I've seen many results with no, zero mistakes at the hazard perception. So it's not difficult. And before you start the test, on the next screen, there is first a practice question. And this question does not count towards the result of the exam. So let's look at the test question. And you see, the time is running from 8 till 0. You see this? 1, 0. Okay, 8 seconds. And how long is 8 seconds at the CBR? Is it too short? Way too short? of more than enough time. And the right answer to this is more than enough time. Because in normal traffic, you don't get eight seconds to react. You have only one second or less than one second. 
So what you see here, you see a pedestrian crossing with pedestrians on it. So what you have to do, brake, and there is a lorry behind you. So what? Huh? You must brake, you must let the pedestrians go. Yeah? Hazard perception, not difficult. Well, so we proceed to the hazard perception part now. I think it's time. Okay, let's do it. Oh, before, if or after you click on proceed, CBR asks if you're sure you want to proceed. Okay, of course, I want to proceed. Then, we see eight seconds every question. What should you do? It's always the same. Brake, release the accelerator or do nothing. Only thing you watch out is your speed. Your speed is 40. In front of you, there are three bicycles. And at the CBR, bicycles driving with 10 kilometers per hour, not faster than that. If you drive on a bicycle, maybe you drive 20 or 30. But at the CBR, they drive only 10. So if you release the accelerator, you hit them with 38 kilometers per hour. That's not, not a smart thing to do. And you cannot overtake them also. First of all, there is oncoming traffic. And second of all, if there is no oncoming traffic, you cannot see what's coming after the curve. And you see, you have to give way after the curve. So, quite simple, you have to brake. And better you don't look in the rear view mirror, but it's your choice. Eh? Okay, if you want to see some questions at TikTok, then you can search at theoriecursus.nl. Sometimes it's in Dutch over there, sometimes in English, and sometimes in Espanol. Se habla Espanol, puede ver aquí. Well, question number two. Eight seconds. Look, the time is running. What should you do? The light is green, you drive 40, but the red car in front of you is braking, so you must brake also. But even if the car is not braking, you still must brake. You cannot go to the curve with 40 km per hour. You must brake and change to the second gear and start slowly at the curve. So every time if you turn right or you turn left, you must adjust your speed. If you turn right, you start the curve with about 15 km per hour, not faster than that. Question number three. We drive 80 outside the build-up area because there is a speed limit of 80. This is outside the build-up area. And you see something special? Trees. No, eh? nothing special. Oncoming traffic. Nice. So, we drive 80. We may drive 80, so we do nothing, nothing at all. And remember, theorycause.com make you pass the test. Question number four. We drive 100 km per hour on a motorway. Or if you want to say highway, it's good by me, but CBR calls it a motorway. And you drive in the middle lane. Look, you have one, two, three lanes, and one is going to the right. So, one, two, three lanes, you drive in the middle. Why you drive in the middle? Because you're overtaking those cars over here. And if you're overtaking, you do nothing at all. Question number five. If there were no bicycles, you still have to brake, because you have a speed bump in front of you, and you don't want to fly in the air. Are you? Uh, of course not. So if there is a speed bump in front of you, you brake. And if there is no speed bump, you still have to brake because those bicycles here, they from the sidewalk, there is no... Yeah, maybe here, here there is maybe a cycle track, but here it's a sidewalk. But still, you have to let them go. Remember, this part calls hazard perception. This part is not who has the right to drive, no hazard perception, and this is a hazard, so you have to break. Question number six, you are leaving an exit, and if you're leaving an exit, you have to give way to everybody, and I think pedestrians counts to everybody. So what have you to do? You have to break. Yeah, if you leave an exit, everybody else goes 
first. We drive 30, we are approaching a roundabout, and not only we are approaching a roundabout, on the roundabout there are bicycles, and bicycles have priority. So, simple question, simple answer, you must brake. Oh, but there is a car behind you, so what? You must brake also. Uh, don't look at the rear view mirror. If you want to, you may do it, but my advice, better don't. Question number eight. We drive 120 km per hour. Is that allowed? Of course it's allowed. It's a motorway, and on a motorway you may drive 130. Yeah, but it is daytime. Daytime? Why do you see a clock? Do you see a clock somewhere with the time? No. But it is light, yeah? And what? in the summer it starts getting dark at 10.30 or something. So it can be 8 o'clock in the evening. You don't know the time. Yeah, you drive 120. You are overtaking this red car. So what should you do? Nothing at all. But this is a taper. Yeah, a taper. So after after the curve, this lane is, is gone. This lane is gone. So what? You're not after the curve. Just overtake the car. And if you cannot merge over here, you go to the right. You can all that, that. do it after the curve. Do nothing, please. Question number nine. We drive 30, nothing to see. So nothing to see. We do. Eh? We do nothing. And why it says break? Quite simple. If you two children on the carriage way or close to the carriage way, the answer at the CBR is always break. And it each test at the CBR, you always get one, two, three, four images with children. And those are presents from the CBR with children, you break. And sometimes you don't see children, but you see toys of children, bikes or whatever. And with all those, you break. Break. Question number 10. We are in an RF. This sign means RF. CBR doesn't translate it for you. They call it an RF also. And the speed limit in an RF is 15. So you're a little bit criminal now eh, because you drive 20 way too fast. So what do you have to do? Of course, you release the accelerator to go a little bit slower yeah speed limit in the air of 15 kilometers per hour release the accelerator question 11 we or you drive with 40 kilometers per hour and do you see something special no there is a street here on the left there is a dirt bag over here but nothing special so nothing special to see you push on nothing Question 12, you drive 20, do you see something special? Yes, a duck, mother duck with one, two, three, four small ducks crossing the street. So what do you do? You break. If animals cross the street, just as children, you break. Question number 13. You drive with 20 kilometers per hour, but a pedestrian over here, it's a... Um, Minister of the Netherlands, Hugo de Jonge, and many people call him the clown, is crossing the street. But does it matter if it's Hugo de Jonge or somebody else? If somebody else is crossing the street, you break. Because the question is not do you have to give away? No, it's hazard perception and he is a hazard. Question 14. We drive 20 and... There is snow on the road, so what are we going to do? Do we break? No, I don't think we break. So we do nothing? Mm, snow in 20 is a little bit fast. So release the accelerator and drive slowly on the roundabout. Question 15. We drive 100 kilometers per hour and the advisory speed is 80 so we drive a little too fast don't brake on the motorway but release the accelerator so you can start slowly with the curve 
Question 16. We drive 80, but the speed limit is 70. So we drive a little bit too fast. And if we drive a little bit too fast, we little bit release the accelerator. Question 17. We drive 80 and we want to turn to the left, but there is no left. So we want to overtake. And if you overtake, you do nothing. Yeah, because if you brake or release the accelerator, you cannot overtake anymore. So if you are overtaking, you do nothing at all. Question 18. We drive 40. Do you see something special? No, I do. I see a sign and that means no entry. You cannot go straight ahead, so you must turn to the right. And with 40, you cannot turn to the right. So you must brake, go back to the second gear and start slowly with the curve. Brake is the right answer. Question 90. We drive 30 in Amsterdam. And there is a tram over here, a bicycle over here, but space enough to drive through. So you do nothing at all. Number 20. There is hail on the road. And why it's hail and no snow? Because I made a picture myself. And I know it's hail. And you see a mother with a child on the steering wheel and a child walking next to the bicycle. And maybe they see you, maybe they don't. But it's a bad weather. So you brake. So the advice of other people, never brake in the snow, never brake on a slippery road. Nonsense. Don't believe those advices. Question 21. We drive at 30 km per hour and this woman with a walking aid wants to cross the street. So if she wants to cross the street, we must let her go. So we break. Question 22. We drive 40, we see a curve and we see snow on the road. So is release the accelerator enough or not? No, it's not enough, because if you release only the accelerator, you will end up here somewhere. So you must break to start safe with the curve. Question 23, we drive 100 and we want to take this exit. What do we do? Do we release the accelerator or do we do nothing? We do nothing at all because you release the accelerator here at the exit lane and not on the main carriage way. So drive on, go to the right and over here somewhere you release the accelerator. Question 24. Another question in the snow. So many people give us advice never break in the snow but I don't think that's a good thing to do. We have to Break and pass this horse slowly. Release the accelerator is not enough. Question 25. We are warned for a slippery road, but by not wegdek means only if the surface of the road is wet. And you see the sun is shining, so there is no rain, no wet surface, so you do nothing at all well this was the hazard perception part it's not so difficult let me give you some advices never press next during the exam at the cbr never push on the next button because if you do it at seven or eight seconds then the system of the CBR also goes to the next question. So you skip one question and there is no button with go back. You cannot go back in the hazard perception part. So never ever push on next. The system will go to the next question when the 8 seconds are over. And the 8 seconds to answer the question will not change if you have reserved an exam with extra time. For me, you can look in the rearview mirror, but it is and remains a waste of your time. So if you want to look in the rearview mirror, it's your choice, it's your problem. But my advice, don't look in that mirror. 
and do not believe nonsense advices such as never break in the snow or always break when you see animals. Yeah, look at your speed, look at the image, and then you make your choice. First, you look at the speed, and then you look at the whole picture and pay particular attention to traffic signs, children, short teeth, children toys, etc., etc. And at the hazard perception part, the cyclists drive about 10 km per hour at the CBR. And I am not going to give you nonsense advices. Almost everybody passes the hazard perception part. Many people are scared for this part, but it is the most easy part at all. So don't worry about this part at all. And if you do the test at the CBR, Always, after the hazard perception part, you get the knowledge part. So, we click on next and we are at the knowledge part. And you see this screen at the CBR and it says, if you click on start the exam part, knowledge gets started. And you have 8 minutes to answer the 12 questions. But if you have a test with extra time, you get 13 minutes to answer the 12 questions and if you answer 10 or more questions correctly you have passed the knowledge part and you have to pass all three parts knowledge insight and hazard perception you answer a question by tapping the screen tap next to continue and tap previous to go back and you can click on next 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 previous 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 as many times as you want and you can skip a question by tapping next. That's logic. You can see how much time you have left for this part at the top of the screen. So this time you see here the remaining time in the top. And at the bottom of the screen, you can see how many questions you still have to complete. And at the top right, you see help, review and overview. And to mark a question, tap the review flag but I'd say you don't have to do that because you can see it in the overview. And tap overview to see which questions you answered, skipped or marked. And tap a question number in the overview to return to the exam and to that question. And tap next to begin the knowledge part. So let's tap next. And before the knowledge part start, now I give you an advice. And do the knowledge and the inside part in four steps. And the first step is to scroll quickly through all the questions you need to answer, as I'll show you now in a moment. Let's click next and start. Question one, two, three, four. 5, question 6, and 7, and 8, 9, 10, 11, and the final question, question number 12. And if you click on next now, you see an overview, and in the overview you see you didn't answer any questions at all, because they're still white. Only if you answer a question, they become gray. And what is the benefit to watch the questions first? Because now you know if you test the part of knowledge is difficult or not. Okay. Now it's time for the second step. And in this step, you will read all the questions carefully, but you don't answer the questions. Only read the questions. Question number one. What is the color of the left-hand headlamp from the last motor vehicle of a military column? Is it blue? Is it green? Or is it white? And remember, in the second step, you don't give answers. Only read the question. Question two. This cycle, moped track, is part of answer A, the carriage way, answer B, the road, or answer C, both the carriage way and the road. Question number three. Does an entry lane belong to the continuous carriage way? Yes 
or no? Question number four. When is it night according to the Road Traffic Act? Answer A, the period between sunset and sunrise. Answer B, the period between sunrise and sunset. Or maybe answer C, a half hour before sunset till a half hour after sunrise. Question number five. Is a funeral procession classed in the category of priority vehicles? Yes or no? Question number six. Can an animal ambulance be classed in the category of priority vehicles? Answer A is yes. Answer B is no. And answer C, only if the animal ambulance uses the required optical and sound signals. Question number seven. Does a Rijkswaterstaat, a Rijkswaterstaat, this, those cello vehicles, Rijkswaterstaat, sorry, CBR doesn't use an English name for it. So, does a Rijkswaterstaat vehicle fall under the category of emergency vehicles, yes or no? And number eight, the traffic officer gives this sign to the traffic. The traffic approaching the traffic officer. Answer A, from the left must stop. Or answer B, from the right must stop. Or answer C, from the front must stop. Question nine, is a horse rider allowed to use the cycle track if there is no bridle way? Yes or no? And number ten, for which vehicles is the road closed where this sign is placed? Answer A, for all motor vehicles. Answer B, only for passenger cars. Or answer C, for motor vehicles with more than two wheels only. And we're almost there. Question 11, which symbol has to do with the engine? And the final question, the height of the car, including the bicycles, is 3.3 meters. Are you allowed to drive? Yes or no? So, now you read all the questions carefully without answer them. And if you click on next, you see the same overview. And the overview is everything unanswered. Good. One advice. Some people will click on finish the exam or continue to insight. Never, ever, never, ever click on on there. Uh, just click on number one and go back to number one. But before we go to number one, then we start with the third step. And in this step, you're going to answer all the questions where you're for more than 100% sure about. If you don't know the answer, skip the question. Yeah, you can mark the question with a flag but it's not necessary, yeah? Okay, then time to the first question. And remember, only answer questions where you're sure about. Question number one. What is the color of the left hand headlamp from the last motor vehicle of a military column? Is it blue, green or white? And I know many people click on green because they know the last motor vehicle have a green light but it's on the right side on the left side they're all white because if they drive in the dark they cannot see anything if they have two colored lights so on the left hand side it's always white that's your answer question number two this cycle moped track is part of answer a the carriage way Answer B, the road, or answer C, both the carriage way and the road. And the carriage way is everything for vehicles who are driving except cycle tracks, moped tracks and footpaths. They don't belong to the carriage way, but they still belong to the road. So a cycle moped track is part of the road. Question number three. Does an entry lane belong to the continuous carriageway? Yes or no? And for the video, for the movie, we skip this question. Yeah, 
later I explain you why. Yeah, you don't know the answer, so just click on next and we go to question number four. Question number four, when it's night, according to the road traffic act. Now, night is when the sun goes down till the sun comes up. So, it's the period between sunset and sunrise. And between sunrise and sunset, it's calling day. And answer C, a half hour before, that's long, long, long ago. That's more than 30 years ago. Yeah. So, night between sunset and sunrise, day between sunrise and sunset. Question number five. Is your funeral procession classed in the category of priority vehicles? Yes or no? And a priority vehicle must have what color? What? Blue. Okay. Blue and sound signals. Yeah. And the funeral procession. You think they may have a sound signal or blue lights on the rooftop? No, of course not. Question number six. Can an animal ambulance be classed in the category of priority vehicles? Yes, no, or only if the animal ambulance uses the required optical and sound signals. But a priority vehicle must use blue optical signals. And on an animal ambulance, there are orange. So... Can it be classed as a priority vehicle? The answer is no. Number seven. Does a Rijkswaterstaat vehicle fall under the category of emergency vehicles? Yes or no? And many people say the answer must be yes. But the answer is no. Only with the sound signals and the optical signals, it falls under the category of priority vehicles. Yeah, and not if they don't use them. So, does an ambulance vehicle fall under the category of priority vehicles? No. Only with the blue lights and the sound signals. Remember that. Number eight. The traffic officer gives the sign to the traffic the traffic approaching the traffic officer answer a from the left must stop answer b from the right must stop or answer c from the front must stop let's say you drive in the netherlands we drive on the right side so if you see this traffic officer can you drive through yes you can drive through because you don't hit his arm so it's not from for traffic from the left and if you are coming from his right side and you want to drive through, you drive against his arm and he doesn't like that. So the right answer is answer B. Traffic approaching the traffic officer from the right must stop. And traffic is everything. Pedestrians, bicycles, mopeds, cars, everything must stop. Question number nine. Is a horse rider allowed to use the cycle track if there is no bridle way? Answer A is yes and answer B is no. And I'm sure of not. No. I think you have seen horses on a cycle track. Yeah, or you have seen horses on a footpath. But if there is no bridle way, a horse rider may only use the verts or the carriage way. And a cycle track does not belong to the carriage way. So the answer is no. Question number 10. For which vehicles is the road closed where this sign is placed? Answer A. For all motor vehicles. Answer B. Only for passenger cars. Or answer C. For motor vehicles with more than two wheels only. Okay, my question to you, how many wheels do you see on this picture? Two, okay, and two is also in the answer. Yeah, so this road is closed for motor vehicles with more than two wheels. A motorcycle has only two wheels, so a motorcycle can drive into this road. But passenger car, a brommobile, a tractor, a lorry, 
they are all not allowed to drive into this road. Number 11, which symbol has to do with the engine? And the last symbol looks like an engine to me, so the last symbol has to do with the engine. This one, it's the cruise control. And this one has to do with the battery. And the first one has to do with ABS. Final question. The height of the car, including the bicycles, is 3.3 meters. Are you allowed to drive, yes or no? And yes, you are allowed to drive because a passenger car, including the load on the roof, may not be higher than 4 meters. So 3.3, 3.6, it's all allowed. And if you click on next now, you will see the overview. And if you post on the flag here, you want to review the question number three, and you push on the flag, then you get this little star over here. So if you push or don't push on the review button yeah, on the flag, makes no difference at all. So my advice, don't click it. But if you want to, feel free to do so. And what you know, you know that question number three still is not answered. And now you go to the fourth and final step. And in this step, you will answer all the questions that you not have answered. And of course, if you have answered all the questions, you don't have a fourth step. So here are all the steps, four steps. You don't have to follow my advice. You can do the test on your own way. It's only an advice. And a lot of people tell me after the test, yeah, it helped me a lot. So if you don't want to, you don't do it. Now here is an example of the overview. And if you click on number three, you go to number three, and now we're going to answer number three. Does an entry lane belong to the continuous carriageway? Yes or no? Well, the carriageway is for the cars. Yeah, where the cars are driving, it calls carriageway. But continuous means you must can continue. This gray car over here, this Volvo or something, can continue his journey. But the black car who is on the entry lane, cannot continue because if he continues to drive into the woods or against the trees. So an entry lane belongs to the carriageway, but doesn't belong to the continuous carriageway. So you have to click on no. And now you click on next again. And again, we have the overview. And now you see, everything is Gray. So you answer all the questions and you can only answer questions if you're more than 100% sure about your answer. And now you click on never ever click on finish the exam. You're going to click on go to insight. And if you go to insight, then CBR gives you a little reminder. Yeah? If you are sure about it, of course you're sure about it. And then you see the information provided to you by the CBR. If you click on next, the exam part inside gets started. And you have 16 minutes to answer the 28 questions. But if you ordered an exam with extra time, you have 26 minutes to answer the 28 questions. You have passed the inside part if you answer 25 or more questions correctly. This means you may make only three mistakes. You answer a question by tapping the screen. Tap next to continue and tap previous to go back. And you can skip a question by tapping next. Or, of course, you can use the flag. You can see how much time you have left for this part at the top of the screen. At the top. At the bottom of the screen, you can see how many questions you still have to complete. And at the top right, you see Help, Review and Overview. To mark a question, tap the Review flag. And tap Overview to see which questions you have answered, skipped or marked. And tap a question number in the Overview to return to that question in the exam. And tap Next to begin the inside part. But in this exam, two extra questions have been added by the CBR. 
and this do not count toward the final result. And why the two extra questions? Because the CBR says those are new questions and we want to see if we, if we can add them to the exam. But that's nonsense. Or in other words, that's bullshit. Because in the normal exam, they can also add these questions. They can exactly see how many people answer a question right or wrong. So this is only to make you extra nervous. So you know by now, instead of 28 questions, you have 30 questions. Nothing to worry about. But first my advice. And do the inside part just as the knowledge part in four steps. It's only advice, eh? you don't have to do it. The first step is to scroll quickly through all the questions you need to answer as I gonna show you right now. So we go to the first question. Number one. And number two. Number three. Four. Five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and number eleven, number twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, number sixteen, question seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 21, 22, question 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, number 28, number 29, and finally number 30. And then you see the overview. And what is the purpose of watching all these questions very quick? you get an idea of the test. If it's gonna be difficult for you, maybe it's easy for you. Yeah, so only watch the questions very, very fast. It will cost you maybe 30 seconds or something. Yeah, it's no time. Okay. And now it's time for the second step. And in this step, you will read all the questions very carefully, but do not answer the questions. Uh, be honest, only read them, don't answer them. Just like this. Question one, what is the meaning of this sign? And you don't have to look at the answers, only at the question. Yeah, what is the meaning of this sign? Then. The second question, which sign indicates a priority road? And again, don't read the answers. Your memory, your mind will give you the answer if you have learned well. Question number three, your car and trailer are eight meters long. Can you overtake here? Question number four, which sign indicates a compulsory cycle track? And don't read the answers. Question five, are you approaching a level crossing with a double track? Number six, you want to overtake here, is that allowed? Is a car allowed to drive into this road? Number eight, you stop here to let somebody out of your car, is that allowed? Question 9. Which symbol indicates that the high beams are on? Question 10. On which side do you pass this sign and don't read the answers? Question 11. You have car trouble and do not use flashing warning lights. At approximately what distance should the warning triangle be placed? Question 12. Are you obliged to turn on your city lights here? Question 13. It's 2 degrees above zero. Do you now have to take slipperiness into account? Question 14. You want to ride with this kit like this. Are you obliged to switch off the airbag in the passenger seat? Question 15. You involve 
involved in a collision with minor damage on a motorway, where do you fill in the European accident statement? In a nearby parking lot or any two other answers? Question 16. You see children playing on the road and give a signal with a horn. Is that allowed? Question 17. This light comes on while driving. What do you have to do now? Don't read the answers. Question 18. At the roundabout, you want to take the third exit. In other words, you want to turn uh, left. Do you now have to indicate the direction to the left? Question 19. You want to overtake the moped right here and right now. Is that allowed? Question 20. Which part is the blind spot for this driver? Question 21. You park here on the verge. Is that allowed? 22. You want to go straight. Do we have to give way to the red car? Question 23. At which sign can you expect Snorfietsen and Snorfietsen that are light mobile riders but the CBR doesn't translate the word Snorfietsen on the carriage way. 24. What's the correct order of giving way? 25. What kind of road is safer in general? 26. What is the correct order of giving way? 27. You want to turn left and have to stop for oncoming traffic. What is the best position of your front wheels? 28. About what percentage of traffic accidents are caused by human errors? Number 29. What is the correct order of giving way? And the last question. Visibility is 70 meters. You drive with your rear fog lights on. Is that allowed? And now you get another overview and all the answers are white. Only if you answer a question, it becomes gray. But you didn't answer any question at all. Because if you follow my advice, you only answer questions in the third step. In the third step, you're only going to answer the questions where you're more than 100% sure of the right answer. And if you don't know the correct answer, you skip the question. You don't have to mark the question with a flag, but if you want to, you can. Okay, let's go to the first question where you all were waiting on. Question number one. What is the meaning of this sign? Answer A. Road narrows on both sides. Answer B. Two-way traffic. Or answer C. Dangerous crossing. And the right answer is... Answer B. This sign means two-way traffic. Question number two. Which sign indicates a priority road? Is it only sign A, only sign B, or maybe signs A and B? And right answer is answer A. Only sign A indicates a priority road. Some people are confused and they say, yes, but sign B is also a priority road. No, here you have priority only on one junction. And only sign A is a priority road. And if the CBR, CBR asks you which sign indicates something, you always have to choose in one sign only. Only those two signs have the same meaning. So here you can say A and B. Yeah, here you must follow the direction at A and B. And also, which is a, how you call this one? One-way road? Okay, one-way road. This sign is a one-way road and this sign also one-way road. So only in those two situations you can choose both signs. And every other sign has its own meaning. Question number three. Your car and trailer are eight meters long. Can you overtake here? Yes or no? And for the video, we skip this question. It comes later. 
So just click on next. And we are at question number four. Which sign indicates a compulsory cycle track? Only sign A, only sign B, or sign A and B. And one minute ago I told you, if you have to choose which sign means something, you must choose between A and B. So answer C, always the wrong answer. And a compulsory cycle track is only sign A. The next one, B, is voluntarily. You don't have to drive on this road if you have a bicycle. But if you have a bicycle, on sign A, you must drive. Question number five, a tricky question. Are you approaching a level crossing with a double track, yes or no? And I know a lot of people will say, yes, it's a double track. But the right answer is no, it's not. It's not a double track. It means two or more. Two or more is not the same as double. I know it's tricky, but no is the right answer. And if you want to know a lot of answers, almost all the answers, you go to theorycourse.com and there you order your video course. And in the video course, you get a lot of videos, a lot of mock tests, a lot of explanations. And not only a lot of explanations, if you don't understand something, you can send me your WhatsApp and I explain it to you. So you get your private teacher also. Question number six, you want to overtake here, is that allowed? Yes or no? And it is not allowed because before and on a pedestrian crossing, you are not to over or not allowed to overtake any other drivers. And if you watch TikTok, you can search over there at theorycourses.nl. Oh, sorry. It's not theory course, but it's theorycursus.nl. If you search for it, I give you also questions over there in Dutch, in English, y también en español. Question number seven. And you can also watch us on Instagram at theorycursus. So not at theory course, but at theorycursus. Good. Question number seven. Is a car allowed to drive into this road? And this road is a Fietsstraat. And Fietsstraat means cycle road. So is a car allowed to drive into a cycle road? Yes or no? And yes, you are. Because it says auto te gast. And that means a car is guest here. So we may drive into a cycle road, into a Fietsstraat. Question number eight. You stop here to let somebody out of your car. Is that allowed? Yes or no? And the right answer is yes, you are allowed to let a passenger in or out of your car. Because you are at a bus stop and at a bus stop you can do the same thing as a bus does. Let the passengers in and out and you may do the same. But at the bus stop you may not load and unload goods. And if you want to do the theory test at the CBR in Amsterdam, this is how the CBR in Amsterdam looks like. It's on the Narita Weg in Amsterdam. Question number nine. Which symbol indicates that the high beams are on? And I know normal you see colors, green and blue and whatever. But at the CBR you can also get this question in black and white. And the high beam is the third one. Those lines go straight forwards and emit the dipped high beams. The lines are going down. And the first one indicates at the CBR your parking lights or city lights and this one your fog light at the rear or fog light at the front at the rear it's a red and at the front it's yellow or orange question number 10 on which side do you pass this sign is it on the right side the left side or right or left makes no difference 
and you have to pass this sign on the right side. And why? Those red lines pointing down to the carriage way. So this sign is placed on the left side of the road, but you have to pass this sign on the right side. So the question is not on which side of the road this sign is placed, but where do you pass in? Let I explain you more. Look, on the left side, you see the red lines pointing down to the carriage way, and on the right side, they're pointing down to the carriage way this way. So this one is on the left, and you pass it on the right side. This one is on the right, and you pass it on the left side. And Every red line is 80 meters, so this is 240 meters before the crossing, this one 160, and the last final one 80 meters before the crossing. Question 11. You have car trouble and do not use flashing warning lights. At approximately what distance should the warning triangle be placed? And if you have a theory book, in the theory book you will find 100 meter on the highway, but that's not correct. The right answer at the CBR is always 30 meters. And remember this distance because you have to fill it in. It's not a multiple choice, you must fill in how many meters. Question 12. Are you obliged to turn on your city lights here? Yes or no? And the right answer is not yes, but the right answer is no. Because if you must put your lights on, it are the dipped beams. And dipped beams is not the same as city lights. And here it says in Dutch, ontsteek uw lichten. And it means put your lights on. And if you have to put your lights on, it's always dipped beam. Question 13. It's 2 degrees Celsius above zero. Do you now have to take slipperiness into account? Yes or no? Yes, you have, because the temperature is 2 meters above the road. And there is always a little warmer than the road itself. The road itself could be 5 minus. So, the road can still be slippery. So, at 2 degrees, do we have to take slipperiness into account? Yes, you have. Drive careful. Question 14. You want to ride with this kid like this, with his face fronting the windshield. Are you obliged to switch off the airbag in the passenger seat? Yes or no? No is the right answer. Only with his face to the seat. So, backwards, then you must put the airbag off. But in this case, the airbag could stay on. Question 15. You are involved in a collision with minor damage on a motorway. Where do you fill in the European accident statement? Answer A. In a nearby parking lot. Answer B. On the hard shoulder. Or answer C. In or next to the car together with a police officer. And the right answer is answer A in a nearby parking lot. Because if you stay on the motorway, you will cause a traffic jam. So don't stay on the hard shoulder or wait for the police because the police won't come if there is only a small accident. Question number 16. You see children playing on the road and give a signal with a horn. Is that allowed? Yes or no? Right answer is no. You may only give a signal with a horn or with your headlights in case of immediately danger. And this is not immediately danger. Yeah, you have to wait till they're gone. Yeah, and if they don't go too fast, you step out of the car and you ask if they will move away from the carriage way. But don't blow the horn. Question 17. This light comes on while driving. What do you have to do now? Answer A. Continue the journey at a low speed. Answer B. Looking for a guard garage to have the car checked. Or answer C. Stop immediately at a safe place. 
If you see a red warning light at the CBR exam, you always choose for answer C, stop immediately at a safe place. So, doesn't matter which red warning light you see, you always stop immediately at a safe place. Question 18. At a roundabout, you want to take the third exit. In other words, you want to turn left. Do you now have to indicate the direction to the left? Yes or no? You have to fill in no as an answer because you only indicate if you are want to go away from a roundabout and not if you are approaching a roundabout and you want to take the second or the third or maybe the fourth exit you don't indicate to the left at the roundabout you only indicate to the road when you want to go off the roundabout question 19 you want to overtake this moped right now is that allowed yes or no and you can maybe you think it's allowed but the right answer is no because you are going up to a hill and you cannot see approaching traffic from the other side so if you cannot see the approaching traffic your answer is always no question 20 what part is the blind spot for this driver it's only part one this beautiful part over here or it's only part two this part over here or maybe part one and two it's only part one the blind spot is everything where the driver doesn't see if he look for the car or in this rear view mirror or in the left or the right mirror the blind spot you can only check if you look over your shoulder and if you look over your shoulder you see part one and at the cbr test you get blind spots from cars from lorries from motorcycles and you have to know all the blind spots question 21 you want to park here on the verge is that allowed yes or no and normal you may park in the verge so the right answer is no because you are in a rf it's a word which the CBR doesn't translate RF. Yeah, and in an RF you may only park in a parking place with a letter P painted on the road. So you may not park in words in an RF. Question 22. You want to go straight. Do you have to give way to this red car who's turning to the left? Yes or no? And you have to say no, because if you go straight, you go first before turning drivers. So you don't have to wait for the red car. If this red car was approaching from the left, you must let him go. If you go straight and he was approaching from the right, you have to let him go. This unpaved road has the same meaning as sharp teeth. You only give way to drivers on the crossing street. And now you have to deal with rule number two. And if you don't know what is rule number two, I explain it in the video course. And if you're almost ready for the CBR test, but you failed a few times and you didn't take our video course, not so smart. And if you want to have a few private lessons, you can always book private lessons with us, with me. Question 23. At which sign can you expect a snor fietsen, like moped riders, on the carriage way? Is it only at sign A, this one? Is it only at sign B, this one? Or is it answer C, neither at signs A and B? And the right answer is answer C, neither at signs A and B, because these signs are for mopeds and not for light mopeds. So this sign means the mopeds have to go away from the carriage way to the cycle moped track. And this sign means the mopeds have to go to the carriage way. But the question is not about mopeds, but about snorfietsen. And snorfietsen, they always drive on the cycle track. 
Question 24 is a very difficult question, so we skip it and we see this question later in the video. Question 25. What kind of road is safer in general? Is it the first one? It is auto weg, auto weg. The same word is the word that the CBR uses, auto weg, car road, if you translate it. Or is it this road? And this road is a motorway. So what kind of road is safer in general? It's the motorway. Because on an auto weg you get junctions, you get oncoming traffic. And on a motorway you don't have junctions, you don't have traffic from the left or the right. And also you don't have oncoming traffic. So the motorway is safer than the auto weg. Question 26. What's the correct order of giving way? Well, we see a van over here, we see the white car and a pedestrian, and the white car has sharp teeth in front of him. And sharp teeth means he must give way to drivers from the left and from the right. And the van goes straight, so it has nothing to do with the pedestrian. So the van is number one. And now, is it the pedestrian? Or the car. Shark teeth means you must give way to drivers. And this man over here is not a driver. So the car is number two. And finally, the pedestrian. That's the right order of giving way. Question 27. You want to turn left over here. And you must stop for oncoming traffic. What is the best position of the front wheels? Answer A, the front wheels turn to the right. Answer B, the front wheels just straight ahead. Or answer C, already turned slightly to the left, so you can drive easily away. And the right answer is answer B, because if there is happening something, your feet is slipping off the clutch or somebody push you from behind, you go straight. But if your front wheels are turned to the left, then you have a problem with the oncoming traffic. And why should you turn to the right? There is no need to. So answer B is the right answer. Well, you're almost there. About what percentage of traffic accidents are caused by human errors? Is it 60, 75 or 90 percent? And of course, the right answer is answer C. 90% of the traffic accidents is caused by human errors. In this case, it's not the fault of this boat over here. Not something else. No, human errors causing traffic accidents. 90% or more are caused by errors of a human being. Question 29. What's the correct order of giving way? Well, we see a white car going straight on a normal road. We see another car it's coming from an unpaved road and we see a pedestrian. So this car must give way to drivers on this road. And the car is going straight, same as the pedestrian. So the car has nothing to do with the pedestrian. So the car is number one. But now, number two. Who is number two? Is it the pedestrian or is it the car? And it is the car, because he must give way to drivers and not to pedestrians. Remember that. So the pedestrian is number three. And if you are at question 30 at the CBR, you are happy because you're almost there. Okay. Question 30. Visibility is 70 meters. You drive with your rear fog lights on. Is that allowed? Yes or no? That's not allowed because only if visibility is less than 50 meters, you may drive with your rear fog lights on. So no is the right answer. And if you click on next, you see the overview. And in the overview, you see two white spots. It means you didn't answer those questions. And if you use the flag, then you see the stars over here. Okay, then it's time for the final step. And the final step, you will answer all the questions that you have not answered. 
Of course, if you have answered all the questions, you don't have a fourth step. That's logic. Yes. Okay. Let's go back to the overview. Good. You see number three, number 24 are not answered and you can first answer 24 or first question number three. Does it matter which question? If you click on any other question, you go to that question. Eh? Also, if you have answered the question already. But let's go to question number three. And question number three is this one. Your car and trailer are eight meters long. Can you overtake here? Yes or no? And I know that many people say no, you cannot, because with the trailer longer than seven meters, you may only drive in the right lane or the line lane next to it, and not in the third or the fourth lane. So you are a little right, but you're still wrong. Because this is lane number one to Amersfoort. This is lane number two to Amersfoort, Amstelveen, Haarlem. And here is lane number one to Utrecht, Maastricht. And this is lane number two. You see, you have two lanes to Amersfoort. So you may drive in this lane or in this lane. And you have two lanes to Utrecht, lane one, lane two. So the car and trailer, doesn't matter how long they are, they may drive in every lane. Okay, we go back to the overview by clicking the overview button in the top right and you see you didn't answer 24 with or without star so now we have to click on number 24 to go to 24 and 24 is this question what is the correct order of giving way we see a military column we see a pedestrian on a pedestrian crossing we see a moped and a car so many people say, ah, that's easy, because the pedestrian goes first. That's number one. But then you're wrong, because a military column doesn't have to stop for a pedestrian on a pedestrian crossing, and they also don't have to stop if a bus is leaving a bus stop. So number one is the military column. And after that, then the pedestrian may walk. And then we have the moped and the car, and which of the two is coming from the right? Exactly, the car is approaching from the right, so the car is number three. And finally, we have the moped. And now we click again on overview. And then we see, ah, we have answered all the questions, and they're all right. Because you may only answer questions where you're more than 100% sure about. And now it's time to finish the exam. So let's push, finish the exam. And the CBR asks if you're sure that you will finish. And of course, you're sure that you finish because you have answered all the questions. And what do you think? Did we pass or did we fail? And we have to go back to the CBR again. Well, let's push the yes button. And look at this result. Ah, the queen thumped up. You passed the test. Okay, if you are at the CBI, you can leave your desk and go out of the exam room and go to your locker and pick up all your stuff and leave the CBR. And if you look at your phone, you will see you've got an email from the CBR with your results over there. Okay, that was everything for this video, almost one hour and a half, was enough time and if you want to learn everything, you go to theorycourse.com and there you can add order your video course. Hope to see you by the next video. Thank you. Gracias. Ciao. Adios.